So here are the options I'm thinking for the next video. You got the Nomos Homage, the EcoDrive Chrono, the Vostok Scuba, or the Nazkin Pagoda. What do you think? And I think that'd be a good idea for next time. This time I think we need something a little different. Something unique, you know? But I need something to drink. So I've been looking for another Seiko to review, but I wanted to do something a little different. And I think I found it. This is one of the Seikos that are affectionately referred to as bottle caps. Due to the shape of the case, well, looking like a bottle cap. Now I think this is one of Seiko's more unusual offerings. And not just because of the case shape, but because of the stainless brown and brass color scheme that's going on here. So let's start with the dimensions. And on the bottle cap, it's not quite as straightforward as it normally would be. It's a 45 millimeter watch, but it really doesn't wear like one for three reasons. The first is because it's simply a very, very round case. And the second is because the case quickly tapers as it moves up. So while it's a 45 millimeter at its base, at the top of the bezel, it's only a 43 millimeter, and I think it wears as such. And lastly, because of its lugs. They're small, short, kind of stubby, but they come down at an angle and at the very edge of the case. And if you notice, they also extend a bit below the case, which tends to lift the watch up a bit while you're wearing it. Now the width with the crown is 47 and millimeters, and the lug to lug length isn't very long at 47 millimeters. The height of the case is also a little different. From the case back to the top of the crystal, it's 13 millimeters. But as I said, the lugs actually stick below the case back. So from the bottom of the lugs to the top of the crystal, it's 14 and millimeters. It uses 20 millimeter straps and weighs in at a light but respectable 93 grams. Now let's get back to the case itself, which has a brushed finish on the top and its sides, but is more polished underneath. This also goes for its stubby little lugs, which if you haven't noticed are actually drilled lugs, which is a nice bonus. The finishing is quite good, and it's what you'd expect from a Seiko. The bezel is this gold bronze bottle cap looking thing, which has white markings and numerals. It is unidirectional, and I believe it's 120 click, but it's a little different. As you turn it and get to the half second mark, there's a quieter click, and you can more feel it than actually hear it. But as you get to the full second hash, there's definitely a more pronounced click in both noise and feel. For some reason, it almost reminds me of turning a combination master lock. It's not a bad thing, it's just a little different, like the rest of the design. And it's a little off-putting at first, so the aesthetic will not be for everyone. But I think it works well together, I'm just not really sure it's for me. My opinion of the coloring of the bezel changes from day to day. Some days I like how it complements the dial, and others, I'm not really sure. The dial is this reflective chocolate brown coloring, which I think is both a strength and a weakness. Indoors, it looks a little dull, flat, boring even in an odd sort of way. But once some direct light, and especially sunlight, hit it, it livens up a bit. Although I think if the dial had some added texture to it, it would really take it to another level. A painted chapter ring surrounds the dial and the hour markers, 
which are an applied dive style dots and bars with a silver outline and white loom center. The hour and minute hands are also sword shaped with silver outlines and the same white loom. And the second hand has a similar flat white color, but there is no loom on it. While the overall color scheme is a little strange, the high contrast between white and chocolate brown make the bottle cap really easy to read in all conditions. Now, as with most Seiko 5s, the logo at the top is also applied, and it does have a quick set day and date at the 3. But unlike most Seiko 5s, this has both hacking and hand winding with its 4R36 movement. The crown is at the uh, 345-ish position. It's polished, a decent size, but it's not screw down. Now, while the design of the watch is out of a diver, it's really more of a dive style watch as it only has 100 meter water resistance, which for most people is okay. It's pretty much all you need unless you actually plan to go diving with it. Now the bottle cap has an exhibition case back and there's something different about it that I haven't quite nailed down. I think it's really just a very circular shape and the short lugs really give it a different look. And as well as the very large rear crystal, which like the front is hard looks. So while from the front, the bottle cap looks like a bottle cap, the rear, it really looks like a porthole more so than any other watch I've seen. And as I mentioned earlier, it has the newer 4R36 movement. So the standard beat rate, the standard 40 or so hour power reserve, but hacking and hand winding. Now accuracy wise, it's okay. It gained just under 15 seconds a day, which is within spec. I prefer a little better, but as I said, it's okay and it should be fairly easy to regulate. Since it's a Seiko, it of course has Seiko's LumaBright Loom, which is fantastic as always. So if you want good, reliable loom, you can't go wrong here. Now the strap it comes with is actually a NATO, and it's the first NATO from Seiko I've gotten. This one is a brownish, burnt orange coloring, and I have to say it is quite well made. Now comparing it to say a regular NATO from Barton or Blue Shark, I would say it's definitely a step above that. It's not quite as good as their premium straps though, but it's definitely better than their regular ones. But it's a very thick material, stiff, but not too stiff, and excellent hardware with a signed buckle, with the exception of the needle, which I think is a little small. But otherwise, it's great. And I think Seiko really needs to start offering more NATOs. Which I think is actually a little ironic, as this is one of the few watches I actually prefer a regular strap. The way the lugs are on it, as they kind of come down at that angle, really help hug your wrist with a leather strap and make it very comfortable. But wearing it on a NATO is still very comfortable. And as I said earlier, it is a 45 millimeters. But with that NATO and the shape of the watch, it really wears more like a 43 millimeter. The price of the bottle cap tends to fluctuate, as well as who actually has them in stock. But I think they usually sit in the low 200s. Although I got this one off Mass Drop for around 150. Now I've mentioned Mass Drop before, but if you're not familiar, I'll put something in the description about them. But at this price, I think the bottle cap may have the distinction of being the cheapest Seiko that still has a nickname. Now price-wise, it's sitting right about in the same area as a Seiko SKX. But the Seiko SKX is a real diver. So while the bottle cap is not quite as capable, you are getting a watch with an updated movement that has hacking and hand winding. So it's really more about where your priorities lie. Now, most people buy a dive watch because they like the style and not so much because they want the capabilities. 
so 100 meter water resistance really isn't that bad for most people. But personally, if I'm getting a dive watch, I'd rather have 200 meter. Now the question you should really ask yourself about the bottle cap is really whether or not you like the bottle cap design. And for me, it's different, which is really what I was looking for. But I think it might wind up being too different. And it's not so much the case shape as much as the color scheme for me. So if I had to do it over again, I'd probably get one of the blue versions. But that's not to say that it isn't a good watch. The bottle cap just has a style of its own. But I will say that it is by far the most comfortable 45mm watch I've ever worn. Especially when you consider that last week I reviewed the Aragon Divemaster Open Heart, which is also 45mm. These two watches couldn't be more different in style and in how they wear. I feel like I'm forgetting something here. That there's something about the bottle cap I'm leaving out. But that's really because, other than the unique design choice, there really are no surprises here. The bottle cap is a Seiko, and it's everything you would expect from a Seiko, which is a good thing. Now as usual, let me know in the comments what you think about the bottle cap. Shape, size, color, let me know. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next time.